Hello everyone, my name's Colin Way. You join me here at Naxminster Skill Centre in the heart of Devon. Um, I'm here today to introduce you to the Colin Way Signature Skew Chisel. Now, as a skew chisel, the design itself, um, I can take no credit for whatsoever. This is a German design skew. The part I play is bringing it back over to this country or bringing it to this country for the first time. I've been working here for Axminster Tools for just over 20 years and a professional turner for 30. Um, my first chance to use a skew chisel like this was uh, two years ago when I paid a visit to Germany to do some demonstrating. I was so taken by how this skew works that I thought we've got to get them into the UK. So I've been working with Crown. Um, we've had a fair few um, designs um, to get to this stage. Uh, the main thing you'll notice about them, of course, is the splayed shape. Now that originally um, is made by uh, beating them with a hammer. They're, they're hand forged tools, beating with a hammer, splaying the steel out, but also making them narrow as you get to the end. Now, the reason I like them so much, the, one, the, 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 the ones that I played with in Germany, was because of that design, they're much lighter than a standard uh, skew chisel we would be used to in this country. So it encourages you to have a much more delicate touch with the skew and you're holding up near the steel. Now because most of my work is with beginners, this really helps to make the tool less intimidating. Couple, coupling that with a 25 degree angle, so much greater than a regular skew, again less aggression. The edge is nicely rolled also so it floats across that tool rest really, really well. So I think enough of talking, I think we need to see how this can work and I'm going to start off just with a practice piece where we'll do a half size table leg and then I want to give you a couple of small projects that you can play with um, to get used to the skew and just to take us back to the roots of, of German turning as well. So here we go. Okay, so we're going to start by using the toe of the skew and make a series of V-cuts. These V-cuts needed to be done until we get down to solid timber. Now you'll hear the tone change as you get to that solid timber, there. Slightly leaning the heel over, and that'll give you a nice curved pummel. Now you've done that, you can carry on and rough down, knowing that you're not gonna fray or break off any of those corners needed on the pummel. Just using a three-quarter roughing gouge here, When it comes to creeping up to your pummel, all we're doing is turning that roughing gouge over using the bottom left hand um, section of the flute and get right up to that detail. So now for the planing cuts, we're using the 30mm skew here um, and concentrating on the bottom third, bottom third nearer the heel of the skew, so that's the shorter point and that way you'll get those lovely planer shavings coming off. So going the other way, right to left, left to right, makes no difference, just turn the skew over Still the heel down and toe up using the bottom half of the skew and that's going to give you those lovely planar like shavings. Just tidying up that V, v cut there. Now second V cut, we're going to make this into um, a little cove. Okay so now we're back to the heel of the skew and we're using that heel just to round over the shoulder of the leg. Now more roughing cuts, this time we're using the skew chisel, so we're using a push and a pull cut, keeping on that half with the bevel rubbing underneath, taking a fairly heavy cut, you don't have to do that, you can go over to the, the roughing gouge if you want. And again a second V cut now, and then heel to round that curve over. This is for the foot of the leg. see here so just a roughing cut and then going down to the heel again right onto the point as we roll over once again we're going to take the diameter down this next little feature needs to be within the diameter of the foot so we're just going to create a little half bead with the heel of the skew Now we're over to a little spindle gouge. So this is a 3-8 spindle gouge. I just need to create a little cove here really, a nice sharp cove. And that will then leave us ready 
for roughing down once again, just blending in those curves, that cove and that, uh, that top convex curve. So again, uh, we're roughing with the skew on this occasion, but you could go back to the roughing gouge and then just finish up with the skew. But I always think this is good practice of those planing cuts. You've got the opportunity here, why not? There we are, so we're just blending in those curves. The reason you get catches with a skew chisel on planing cuts a lot of the time will be because you go above that halfway point. So up toward the toe. Of course the toe isn't supported. It's only the heel that's supported. That's the bit that's touching the tool rest or the bottom edge is touching the tool rest. Note where the hand position is. I'm up fairly close to the steel, so not right back on the handle. Gives me a lot more control. I can feel the, um, the, the, the bevel rubbing the timber. And that's really important. Bevel rubbing is always really important. We were just using the, the hand there just to support the timber on, the, on those, uh, those final cuts. And now we're back to the spindle gouge, just doing that final little cove. So half beads here. The type of project this is being a, a table leg, um, any sharp edges will damage fairly quickly. We just swapped over from the skew to the spindle gouge purely because the, the skew was a little bit too big. Um, I would have hit the pummel. And there we are, the finished table leg. Good practice piece for your skew chisel and good practice piece for copying techniques. Okay, so a nice couple of small projects to practice your skew chisels with. We're going to use this hazel stick and we're going to make some flowers um, and then we're going to airbrush some colour onto those flowers. The jaws we're using here are pin jaws. They're really just to get uh, down to the diameter of the, the hazel stick and also to keep me away from the chuck to save my fingers. So we want a decent amount of that stick in the jaws. And then our first job would be to rough down to get all the bark off. And we're going to do that with a planing cut from the skew. So we've got the smaller um, of the skews here, the 12 mil skew. And we're just going to rough down to start with. Now when you're planing cuts with the skew chisel, we're going to use the bottom half of that cutting edge. So down toward the heel, down toward the shorter edge. Top edge is called the toe, that's the long point. This one is the heel. We're going to use that bottom half. So we're literally just planing, presenting the cutting edge at about 45 degrees to the timber. And we're just going to take off the bark to give us our usable timber. Well, there we are. I think we're, we're down to bark now, or down to solid timber, sorry. Yep, there we are. So now what we need to do is start making our frills. So our first flower. We're going to now go to the heel of the tool and we're going to push toward the chuck and we're going to push that fibre up, let it curl back. Then we're going to do a second one, let it curl back, third. There. Now, the next thing to do is we need to turn over to the toe and start doing a passing cut. So first line, and then this is basically a V cut. So this is like your preparation to bead forming, but you're pushing down the fibers. You're pushing down, cutting that side grain. And I don't only want to leave a little bit. I don't want to leave too much because I want to be able to paint the back of the, the flower as well. And there we are. Now, if we stop the lathe, that's how he looks without paint on. Okay, completely changes it once we put our paint on. So that's next. Okay, so we're going to use an airbrush to put our colour on. Um, the airbrush I'm using is the SP50 from Spraycraft. Now this is a dual action airbrush. It's down for air and you pull back for ink. The further back you pull the trigger, the more ink you're going to get um, coming out. 
The colour that I've got in here is a spirit wood stain. Uh, works fantastic through airbrushes, it's an, a nice dilute solution. Um, and we're just going to add two colours on this one, a red and an orange. So here it goes, we're going to add the, the red first, always the dark colour first. And I'm just going to go around about halfway, that's about it. Now we're going to add the yellow. Lovely little projects these, um, if you're, certainly if you're practicing the skew. Uh, my inspiration from these came from a, a wonderful wood turner called Stuart King, um, who really has perfected the making of these wonderful little uh, flowers, but also travels around Germany where they, they do these and make Christmas trees to decorate their other um, bigger decorations like Christmas pyramids. There we are, let's stop the lathe, let's have a quick look at those. Alright, so you've got that nice transition area which has turned to, to orange. So you've got yellow, orange and red there. So now we're going to finish by parting this one off. Carry on that V cut. And then very carefully bring the hand over, away from your chuck, just to support the flower while you just finish parting off. And then you're left with... Left with your little flower there. Okay, so the little daffodil design now. I'm just going to rough down a little bit more of the timber and just take the diameter down a fraction. I don't need quite so big a piece. And I'm going to use the toe now just to face off. There. Now back to our heel. And we're going to push and flare up those fibers. And now we can create our little cone. So the center of the daffodil, I don't want that extra flare so I can part that one off. Little cone. Okay, so we're mixing the heel and the toe and we're using them for different reasons, for different um, uh, processes really. Now just very slightly hollowing out the center of our daffodil. And now back to the toe on the back where we're just gonna make a series of little V cuts. Just preparation really to part off. There. Now, we can think about colour. So we know that the daffodil is going to have a nice orange centre and then the yellow frills. So we're going to show you how to do that next. Okay, so we're going to add our colour. Now, when it comes to airbrushing, I always like to add the dark colours first and then overspray with the paler ones. So I'm going to start with red, uh, nice and close so I can concentrate the paint where I want it to be. There we are, so we've got our first colour, the red's on. Now we're going to cover the whole of that daffodil with yellow and that will turn our red to a nice orange. Don't forget the back of the flower, that needs colour as well. There we are, so that's just two colours, two colours. And that's given us our, our third in the form of that, that nice orange. So now we can part off. So I'm just using the toe. Remember, the chuck is going at a serious speed, so keep your arms and hands out of the way when you part off. Just support a nice, delicate little cut. And there, there is our daffodil. Okay, so fresh bit of timber. The third little project, and the same uh, on the variation of the same theme, really, um, a little German Christmas trees. I say German because this, my inspiration has come from the German um, model makers and my travels around Germany. So here we go. So again, the same planing cut that you've done for your flowers, just to get down to solid timber. And I think we're there. Now, to start the tree, we need to create the cone shape before we do any flaring. So carry on with your planing cuts. One more cut there. That's enough. Now, where we stop the tree, I think I'm going to 
stop there. So I'm going to start flaring toward that point. So back to your heel again. Flare to your pencil mark. Flare. Flare. Last little bit can come off. And then we're gonna go back to the underside. We're gonna make a couple of those little parting cuts. And you can either make yourself a little, little bucket on the bottom, or this case, I'm just gonna do a very simple stand. A little convex curve there to the bottom. And we're gonna part off about there. Okay, so our next job will be to add some colour. So if I, again, if I stop, show you what we've got so far. We're going to add colour to that next. Okay, so we're going to start with the green. Make sure I cover the underside of those branches. And then I think a nice red for the base will look good on this one. So again, the closer you go, think about the, the paint coming out of your airbrush in a fan shape. The closer you can get, the finer that spray pattern will be. So right down into that bottom edge, you want a nice bold red. There we are, red and green, really nice Christmassy colors. And then we'll part off again. Maybe a little sand, a disc sand or something, just to sand the bottom, but here we go. Part this one away. So there we are, all finished, all painted. Nice little German Christmas tree. There we are, so just some nice introductory um, projects for you to use your new skew chisels with. The fact that these skew chisels are so small, so narrow, so, um, so thin, will really, really help you and benefit the, the cuts that uh, the heel will give to, to create these lovely flared patterns. The addition of the airbrush to add the colour also means that the colour goes deep within those little flares, as opposed to just lying on the surface, which you can get from, from paint pens and so on. So I hope you like the project. Give it a go. You won't be intimidated by it because they're nice small pieces. I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you very much.